Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy and I help people with their breakups. And today we have another story in and this individual actually wrote, added on to the story, made it a bit longer and actually sent in a tip also because it was longer and I really do appreciate that because uh, this can be time consuming. Like I said, like I tell people, it is a privilege that you put in trust and you believe in my work and you, you want to get my take. And I appreciate that. Sometimes if the story is a little bit longer and it takes more time, I also appreciate the fact of, you know, dropping a donation off. Thank you. What can I say? So in this particular story, um, <clears throat> it's pretty long, but it was a long relationship too. It's six years. But one of the things she mentions is how different they are character-wise. He's driven. He's working hard. He's starting new businesses. And she feels like she's being left behind and she's in a, in a place where she's insecure. And it's basically like you just go like this. And what happens in sometimes, and, and what happens in a relationship like that when someone starts to shine, someone starts to do really well and improve and grow and the other person's not doing that themselves, sometimes you can start getting jealous or it can breed insecurity, it can breed contempt, it can breed anger. And really you have to look at why am I upset when they're being when they're doing something successful? Why am I upset when they're growing as a person? And a lot of that has to do with that you aren't doing that. You aren't looking in the mirror that, you know, actually you feel like you're falling behind and it's not fair or you can't do that. But in actuality, if you can use that, I've had a, I've actually had a good friend before that was in a long-term relationship and he admitted he goes, "Look, my girlfriend got a promotion. She started going to school at night for her master's degree. And he goes, I started to piss me off. You know, he started to get really jealous and he took it out on her. And then he goes, I realized I just looked in the mirror one day and I'm like, look, I need to improve. I need to get better. I need to be going to night school. I need to be, you know, and he used it as jet fuel for himself. And then, you know, they came back together and realized that actually they both, you know, need to seek improvement. And growing together is when the relationship, when a relationship that's long term, really gets into unison, and it's hard to do because a lot of times we grow in different directions. We have different values, we have different ideals, and that's when we split apart. But we can come back together. But having growth, whether that's growing in the same areas or growing in areas where they overlap, and we can help each other in the future. Okay, so let's get right into this one. Hi, coach. Thanks for your great content. You are one, of, one to influence one's way of thinking. Well, thank you for the kind words. My ex-boyfriend and I have been together for six years and live together for the most part. That's a serious relationship if you're together for six years. I usually say four, about the four-year mark, five-year mark is when a lot of people break up if they're not growing. Six years is a long time. And if the last year or so you guys have been breeding layers and layers of contempt, I'm guessing, um, it could have been nasty at the end. So let's get into this. Before then, he was always trying to pursue and had interest, but I was quick to judge. Fighters aren't my type. I don't know if you mean physically fighting or if you mean arguing fighting. I'm not really sure of that. We broke up this past April. So April, not too long ago. That's about, right now it is August. So that's about four months ago. Okay, so it's kind of fresh. Um, I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, self-doubt, and feeling purposeless compared to him as he was very driven, good-looking, fit, and well-liked. Well, it sounds like you have an ideal boyfriend. I mean, the attractive things in males, usually for women, are driven men, good-looking is a plus, fit, great, well, he's well-liked. So you're at a kind of a rut in your life. Anxiety, I always tell people, this is something that you can work on outside of your relationship. Anxiety is something that you're causing within and there's triggers. Number one thing that I tell people for anxiety is exercise, uh, breathing techniques, but there's a, a slew of things that you can look up on YouTube. How do I treat anxiety? Combat it head on. Don't make anxiety a product of your breakup or a product of, oh, I just get anxiety. You got to combat it with how am I going to beat anxiety? How am I going to overcome it? And there are ways to do that. Treat it as a separate thing, if that makes sense to you. Self-doubt. You're saying I was dealing with a lot with self-doubt compared to him. So you're saying because he's such a high achiever, you felt like less of an achiever. So this would be something we'd have to talk about in a live coaching of why you're feeling self-doubt. 
Feeling purposeless just means that you don't have a goal, that you aren't working towards something. And finding a compelling vision and a goal when you're in a breakup is a great time because you have all the time in the world and you're re-motivated. This is a lot, a lot of people start to go to the gym again because they're back at ground zero. They have nothing to lose. And a lot of times your, your purpose, like I said, a purpose is a goal. It's a mission, right? And it can change with time. And like you wrote, he's very driven. That means he's got a purpose. He's driving towards something. And you feeling purpose, purposeless can be just in the moment. You need to find a place in a way that you can sit down and think and really think about what you want and where you want to go in life. <clears throat> We often fought because he was a person of logic and reason most of the time when I discussed something he would try to refute it and I would get really upset stating he always has to be right. Well, this is a male thing for the most part. Not all males, but we tend to like to use reason and logic and women like to use emotion more. A lot of women will say like, I don't want your opinion. I just want you to listen to me. And that, that's hard for me in relationships sometimes. Well, I want to get it right. I want to solve the problem. And sometimes you just want to be heard. You just want to vent. So this isn't necessarily this kind of uh, accusation of him. That's kind of how males are, generally speaking. Um, and he can work on that, and you can work on that. I felt wronged a lot. Even at times I would get anxious and tell him something because I knew what to expect and, and like how I am, I wanted him to be more understanding person rather than trying to solve my problems. It's just what I said, solving my problems instead of listening. Well, it's a, especially a driven guy that's no nonsense and is doing well, he wants to solve the problem. It just seems logical to him. Let's stop complaining. Let's stop uh, talking about the problem again and ask, what do you really want from this? Where a woman kind of just wants to vent and talk about that. And... You can work on that, but if he doesn't have the patience to deal with it, but it really depends on what you're venting about, right? You know, if you're venting about a loss in your family, then he might be more understanding. If you're gossiping about a coworker constantly that you feel like, you know, always leaves the toilet seat down in the bathroom, or so, I don't know, or up in the bathroom, whatever, then it might be something he doesn't have patience with. So it might be a case-by-case -case thing. Anyway, he got into starting several businesses and a BJJ Academy. I don't know what BJJ is. And I couldn't help but feel intimidated, insecure, and scared. He would leave me when one of the main goals was succeeded for both of us. Well, that's a problem with you within, with the purposeless, purposelessness and self-doubt. And like I said, in the live coaching, we could work on that and get to the bottom of why are you feeling that. You're feeling that as an individual. You might be, in some ways worried about his success but there's something within you that you need to change outside of your relationship with him finding a purpose is a start finding a goal is a start um, if you were together for six years and you thought once he succeeded he would leave you then there's a lack of trust and connection in that relationship but six years is a long time he, I, i'm sure he'd want to celebrate his his success and victories with you the question is, do you want to celebrate his success or does it make you feel worse? Even from the beginning, he told me he always wanted to take care of us as he wanted to get married. Okay, that's solid. I couldn't see if, it, if, this, way, if this way and couldn't accept his otherness. I made stories up in my head with my anxiety that he was going to pass me up and peace out on us. I never heard peace out on us. Yeah, it's a story you're telling yourself that you believe and is not serving you or the relationship. And over time, he's going to get sick of that story if he doesn't believe it's true. Nothing you've told me is anything that he's said or hinted that he's had some problems with you. It's all self-dialogue in your head, it sounds like. And you're, you're kind of aware of this right now, writing this. So to cope, I would pick petty fights, use him as a punching bag with my problems, be quite disrespectful and impulsive. So you're being self-aware right now of what you did wrong. That's a start. It's a start. Do you want to be that person now? Do you, do you want to work on that? Sad, I know. It's not sad. Don't dwell on it. Understand it. Reflect on it. Improve on it. And find a purpose. Just go, you know what? I don't want to be that person anymore. Looking back, I can see my wrongs. 
and now I want to learn from them and grow from it. Okay, don't don't lament like, oh, that's sad what I did. No, that was wrong what I did. That's not the kind of person I want to be. That's not the kind of person I was in the beginning of the relationship. How can I improve myself? He even tolerated this for years and always told me he loved me and knows I can change. Well, the fact that the fact that you believe you need to believe you can change. That's what I want to tell you. He can't just tell you that. You need to believe that on your own. Sometimes a breakup is the is the jump start to go fuck this. I need to change. He was enabling to, you to act this way. It was always clear in his actions he loved me so much, but for me it was hard at times because growing up in my family, we never really said I love you or was super affectionate. Okay. If I was in a live coaching, that would be a question I would ask. I would ask, how is your family life uh, coming up? And I can relate to this. In my, my family, we didn't use I love you a lot. We were je definitely not affectionate. And in some of my relationships, a lot of times I was... I'm unaffectionate. It doesn't mean I don't love or care. It's just the way I show love um, and the way I learned it. And over time, I've worked on that. And I've actually had partners that are unaffectionate also because that's the way they learn love. So <clears throat> it might make you uncomfortable because that's not how you were raised. But realizing that, you can work on it still now, okay? And there might be something to that. If he was an affectionate person and you weren't, it might make you uncomfortable, okay? <clears throat> Again, realizing that is the first step. Anyway, around March, problems started really arising as he would tell me about this business and his B BJJ Academy. I don't know what that is. I would, um, so he has multiple businesses, okay? I would get a little upset because it would give me a little room for time together. Okay, so it was taking up time that you guys spent together and we couldn't do things I wanted to do since he was always on a schedule with teaching and training businesses. In fact, I was feeling stuck in the relationship. I felt I wasn't growing. Okay, well, you need to take the initiative to grow on your own because obviously his business doesn't involve you, right? And if there's a situation where you're not getting enough attention and enough time from him, then you need to address that directly. Don't be passive aggressive where you pick fights. Say, look, this isn't working. I think we need to spend more time together. Maybe you need to scale back some of these businesses or schedule me in. Um, but the fact that you felt like I wasn't growing, I wasn't doing much to experience life, I was getting bored of the monotony of the relationship which led to me to depression. All this is in your control. So if you see the steps that led to your depression, you can see the steps out of it. If you weren't depressed at one time in your life, why was that? Who, what kind of person were you? In the beginning of your relationship, who were you that was confident? What were you doing? What job did you have? What kind of drive? I, I'm not seeing here that you have a job, but he has a job in many businesses. A lot of times people that stay at home and get taken care of, this happens over time because they lack a purpose. One day I got fed up and I told him I wanted to separate and I wanted to be on my own. He was devastated. And, you know, looking back at what you're writing, this is great that you wrote out your story because you can, you can look at your, your part of the problem too. You're unhappy with yourself. And it might take you being apart to realize that. After that, things cooled off and we brushed it off. My birthday hits and bam, we are distant. I was cold and non-receptive to him. I had a hard time. You're trying to get a reaction out of him. You're trying to elicit him to care more about you to show more affection, to, to show you more time. But the reality is you're still unhappy with yourself. I had a hard time communicating with him in our relationship, would neglect his needs and be very rude to him. He then told me I'm moving out. I looked, that, I looked, I took that seriously as he is a man of his word. I agreed to break up. Well, if he was moving out, he was already, he was already at the door. Days after I... I fucking regretted it so much as I started having separation anxiety. I begged, I cried, and I pleaded. He said he wants to be happy and find what I'm looking for, and he'll always be my friend 100% if it meant to be. If it was meant to be in the future, we'll get back together. I felt rejected. Okay, you were already feeling rejected before this happened, but this was kind of, um, this was something of a wake-up call you needed because 
you were unhappy with yourself, your purposelessness, and you know, it's he's not a bad guy, right? You're almost jealous of his accomplishments. You're just unhappy with your own um, accomplishments, and you can come out of that. You need you need to recenter yourself, refocus on you. You've had a lot of attention on him and what he's doing and what he's doing wrong. And now you gotta you gotta look within and make some some improvement. And you're doing the right thing right here, writing out your story to me. It's a real start. It's being vulnerable. It's being honest. And I applaud you for that. We planned a trip to Japan. I canceled it with him, and we went with my best and went with my best friend. I found out he was planning to propose if things went well between us. And he told my family he wanted to give me time and space, and he was in it for the long run. But what if he changed his mind? You're saying, but what if he changed his mind? That's a very negative attitude. Um, this guy's doing all the right things. I, I think that you're, like I said, you're really unhappy with yourself. And I think deep down you feel like you don't deserve him, if I had to guess. And that's, that's where you're creating these twists and turns. After things cooled off, we strictly contacted each other about our dog. He's actually been visiting the dog when I'm around now. He wasn't doing that when the breakup was fresh. Could it be an indirect, direct approach to see if he would try to pursue in some kind of way. Do you think he's waiting for me to reach out and work it out? I think he's exhausted. I think he's tried tried a lot of stuff. And from what you've told me, you need to make some self-improvements and stop focusing on the relationship and start focusing on building yourself back up, building up your self-esteem, building up your purpose. And when you get to that point, that's a highly attractive place and if, if you're still seeing each other then and you got some things going for you and your confidence is up and you're feeling good about yourself, that's when, that's when you can fix this relationship. I've gone no contact for the most part to work on myself, my patterns of behavior outstanding. I, o I own up to all my wrongdoings. You can see clearly now where the problems lie by watching yours and Craig Kenneth's videos. Okay, thank you. I'm traveling and doing things I want to do and moving on but I can't stop thinking about them. Well, you were together for six years. That's a long fucking time. And you're gonna constantly have things that you do or places you eat that trigger memories. Um, that's completely natural. So you're not, you're not crazy in that sense. You need to find ways to combat that and keep working on yourself. And I'm afraid with no contact, he'll eventually meet someone new and he'll think I've moved on. It's possible. I want to be comfortable and secure with myself first and foremost before trying to reconcile. Great. That's exactly what I would suggest. I mean, then you've been watching my videos. You need to empower yourself. You need to work on yourself first. Because let's say he came to your door tomorrow and proposes to you and says everything. If you're not, you're not at that level, the same thing's going to happen again. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going you're gonna to blame him, pick petty fights because you're not... You're not at a, at a level that you're happy with yourself. With him seeing the person I was, he'd like to. He'd like to be like, screw that. I'm moving on. Okay, let's rewind. I want to be comfortable and secure with myself first and foremost before trying to reconcile. Good. With him seeing the person I was, he'd be like, screw that. I'm moving on. Do you think he still consider a chance with me? I think in this particular case, I don't say this often, but that you were together six years and he went above and beyond to keep trying to make it work. He was actually looking to propose to you. He made comments like he was in it for the long run. He's highly secure and driven with himself. He's doing well in his own life. Is there a possibility? Yes, from what you told me. But you absolutely need to work on yourself first, okay? I'm scared he'll reject me even if I try to eventually pursue, so I want to wait for him to come to me since I did most of the damage. It doesn't help that I am a stubborn person either. Please help. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. I want to make this right and commit to those changes for myself. I miss him so much. All right, like what I would say to this is I would definitely consider doing a live coaching, whether that's with me or Craig Kenneth. I don't have anything bad to say about Craig Kenneth, but I have a different approach. Um, do, you know, take this the next step further and we need to get to the bottom of how we can get you into a place where you have a goal and a purpose and you start feeling really good about yourself. You're going to the gym, 
you you um you got a compelling future that you're looking forward to and you're working at. That's the simple simplest way to put it. It can't just be about getting back with him because then it'll just come back to the same place of you being unhappy. And like I said, you don't you you feel like you don't deserve this guy. The way you're describing the differences in how great he is and how bad you feel about yourself. So I need to know the progress you've actually made. It's one thing to talk about it and say like I need I know I need to do this. It's another thing to feel it. It's another thing to show it and exhibit it um, to another person. Um, but the way it ended with you guys and the fact that you still see each other with a dog, I wouldn't have a problem with you initiating a date with him um, if you've been in no contact for a while. But you got to get away from he'll. I'm scared he'll reject me. Yeah, it's a possibility. You need when, if you guys go out again, you can't go into it with high expectations. When you break up and you've broke up for three or four months after six years, you're restarting a whole new relationship. If you go out, you're starting from scratch. You're not. You don't. You don't. You don't want to bring up the old shit that hurt the relationship before. Um, but I would definitely say this individual. By the way, it ended in the thing about Japan and him wanting to uh, propose to you. He was in it for the long run, and he hasn't completely lost patience with you. But you need to show that you've changed. Does that guarantee that he'll get back with you? No. If you go into it and you're scared that he'll reject you, then it won't work. Because you'll be picking that pesky fight. You'll be doing the same things over over again that caused him to break up with you the first time. You need to be a confident individual that feels really good about yourself. And if you guys go out, you're not clinging to his every word and every action, hoping that you can re-establish where you were in a six-year relationship where you just want to re-establish a spark. You want to rekindle and have fun and get to know each other again, which is different. So... I hope that helps you. And like I said, I definitely consider doing a live coaching with this. Um, and when you know, when you, this is case by case. I always tell people this. It's it's different. It's it's so different with each breakup and each reason. But in this particular one, we we would really need to get to the bottom of of where you want to go with your life. I'm going to attach some PDF questions for that. You know, one quick question would be like, where do you, what do you want to accomplish in the next five years? three or four things that you'd like to accomplish, where would you like to see yourself? And, you know, I don't look at it as a dream. It's something you believe you can do. That's the big part of it. So I hope that helps you. Please visit rightmac.com if you have a breakup story to tell or you'd like to book a live coaching. Thank you for supporting the channel.